Aloha and welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. I'm your adventure guide, Bear Wozniak, coming to you today from Waikiki Beach. We're right next to St. Augustine's Catholic Church. In fact, our studio's right above the altar. Uh, where We live on the 25th floor right here on the beach. Uh, if you're ever coming to Waikiki, go to our website, bearschoolofmanliness.com, and send us a contact form. Maybe we can have some coffee or go to Mass together. We'll be right back with our guest, Marty Matulia. He's the general manager of... Uh, Guadalupe, Guadalupe, Guadalupe Radio Network and EWTN affiliate in Alabama. We're going to get to know some of what it takes to have boots on the ground in EWTN and get to know his personal, his personal testimony, too. We'll be right back. Welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Kickstart that engine and roll thunder with the pack. Explore the grittiness of manly spirituality. Gain traction in the virtues. Zoop up your spiritual engine by turning adversity into adventure. Now here's Bear Wozniak. Let's ride. Aloha, this is Bear Wozniak, your adventure guide. My wife, Cindy, always asks me to start the show off <clears throat> by making the sign of the cross in Hawaii. Ake makua ke keiki ame ke ohana hemalele. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Isn't it great how the, the Catholic Church is everywhere? Jesus said, go and spread the, the gospel to all the nations, which I think is very interesting. He didn't go say, say, go spread the gospel to the world. Very important. The individuation of nations is important. We're not a globalist uh, uh, a so so society. Uh, we, we're a, a universal church. Uh, but we spread the gospel to all nations. We love the individual personalities and uh, the sense of individuation in, in nations, in families, and in individuals. So I'm going to read a quote to you from my newest book, 12 Rules for Manliness, Where Have All the Cowboys Gone? It's actually <clears throat> been hitting in the top five in Christian men's books on, the, on Amazon. So th that means it's getting to the audience that I, I was hoping it would get to. And my sons who uh, do the radio show and the TV shows, uh, like Long Ride Home with, uh, with Bear Wozniak on EWTN and also on Prime Video, um, they're doing these 60-second uh, clips, these shorts on YouTube, which are like ammo for you uh, in, your, in your own uh, desire to evangelize, as we say, to evangelize men. And so you can get these 60-second clips by going to the Bear Wozniak YouTube channel. It's Bear Wozniak Spirit of Adventure YouTube. So I'm going to read you one of those excerpts um, that they've done, done a clip on. It's from the book. And I get to quote uh, Louis L'Amour in my book. I got to talk to his widow. I'm a big Louis L'Amour fan. He was the great Western novelist. His, his heroes were heroic. And, and also the women were strong. Uh, in his book, uh, this sometimes strong people can find themselves in a vulnerable place, and hence often it's the hero cowboy that shows up to save the day, uh, which is very much like the Lord. My mom used to say that God is a swashbuckler. <clears throat> he kind of likes to come in and save the day, like the cavalry arriving at the last minute. So, so often we're up against it, and we're wondering where God is. Um, but God lets us uh, grow in virtue and in love for Him <clears throat> as we uh, go through. Uh, challenges and disappointments, we begin to learn that we're going to love God not for what He does for us, but just for who He is. But wouldn't you know it, so often He just comes in at the last minute and saves the day. And when He does, as we know in our ministry and in our lives, it's just so you know that He, he just so you know, He's the one that did it, that He saved the day. <clears throat> so I'm going to read to you an excerpt from the book. This is from, for, it starts out with a, a quote from Louis L'Amour in his book, Bendigo Shafter. I watched those in the room with me and was lonely within myself. For there was in me a great reaching outwards, a desire to be and to become. And then here's my quote from, the, from my book, 12 Rules for Manliness, Where Have All the Cowboys Gone? It's time to lay your cards on the table. Push all your chips into the middle of the table and say, I'm all in to God. Just show me your plan. Because if you say yes to the plan that God has for you, demons will tremble when you say his name and mountains will move. It will cost you everything, but it will open vistas of hope and joy for you and for those that your life impacts that you cannot even imagine. It's a quote from the book 12 Rules for Manliness. 
<clears throat> our guest today, Marty Matulia, general manager of Guadalupe, Guadalupe Radio Network in Alabama, affiliate of EWTN. We, where do we meet, Marty? Well, first time we met was actually in Kingwood, Texas. Uh, you were driving through back on your long road home, and um, you were driving through with with a deacon and, and a couple of Knights of Columbus and um, my parish, St. Martha Catholic Church there in Kingwood. Um, and, uh, you know, it wasn't too, we didn't have too many of us there, but, um, and as soon as uh, I met you, I called my wife and I said, you got to get, uh, my oldest son at that time was 19 years old, 20 years old. He wasn't in a great place. He was taking a semester off of college, um, had a pretty rough, pretty rough year. And uh, he came to meet you. And uh, it was such an important um, point in his life and in my life as well as, as a father. And, uh, and then I, get, I met you again, um, I guess, 10 years later and uh, here in, in Birmingham and in Irondale at EWTN studio, you were, um, you were on Father Mitch's show, the EWTN Live, and my wife and I came to uh, watch, the, uh, you know, watch you guys air. And, um, and we had a great conversation. Afterwards, I got to take you and your bride to, to your hotel and we had a wonderful 25, 30 minute conversation, and I, I guess that's why I'm here now. <laughs> I remember that moment in Kingwood. You know, I don't know if I remembered it, recollected it when we first talked about it, but I definitely remember that, that he, that he came. And, and it was such a great conversation, you know, in the car, too. Um, uh, just, just to get to know you and to know your bride and to know that you, what your dedication and your commitment is, you know, people who work for, I work in the new evangelization. I don't know if people really realize how much they sacrifice. Um, you know, you could be making a lot more money with your talents and abilities, but you're 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 uh, you're seeking first the kingdom of God and uh, and expanding expanding the kingdom. So everyone there who's out there that feels a little nudge from the Holy Spirit to do something, and you go, I don't know, I, I don't have any experience in that area. I don't know. Is, is that really the Lord or is that the pizza I ate last night? I don't know what that is. Just respond and say yes to the Lord. And even if you're not totally clear about what God's calling you to do, start going in motion. God will direct you. So um, uh, hence we have our friend Marty, who's the general manager of Guadalupe Radio Network in Alabama. So we want to, we want to hear your story. Uh, we would just like to hear your story. I mean, it's five over 500 terrestrial radio stations it's not like cable tv where you shoot a satellite signal up and it goes down magically into everybody's tv there has to be radio antennas there has to be boots on the ground and everybody i know in radio almost i think everybody that i know in, in almost everyone in, in involved in ewg and radio never had anything to do with the radio before they did this and god just said hey you got a minute and and they're off and running you know so the other thing about the small radio stations these, these local radio stations is it brings the whole community all the different parishes together to make this all happen so tell us your personal walk with the lord and then how you started with ewtn we're going to take a uh, it'll take us this and part of another segment because i really want to really get to know the story yeah so I'm, I'm part of guadalupe radio network we have 45 stations we're actually the largest ewtn affiliate in the country right now uh, we're mainly based in texas we were founded in midland texas um, in the late 90s, uh, our, our co-founders, Toya Hall and Len Oswald, they made a, a promise to Our Lady of Guadalupe to do something, you know, wonderful for, for Our Lady. And, um, and where the Holy Spirit led them to was to found a radio station. And in, in the year 2000, well, they, they heard Mother Angelica on, 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 you know, EWTN say, I want you lay people to buy the radio stations and I will provide the free programming. And so that's what they did. They, they started off with one station out in Midland, Texas. They had no idea what they were doing. Midland, they Texas, in, I mean, that's, like you said, that's, in Midland. Yeah. that's, that's so out, uh, that's out West, man. That's, that's, <laughs> that's cowboy country out there. I was Absolutely. just there about a year ago. Yeah. I mean, I, I rode my bicycle through there once from San Diego to Jacksonville, Florida. And, they, and I stopped into a little gas station there, and they go, y'all come back now. And I go, I don't think so. <laughs> I think I could <laughs> bicycle this far back again. But, yeah, I, lo I love the people out, out, out there in West Texas. Yeah, so that's where it all started. And then we expanded to Dallas-Fort Worth and, and San Antonio, Houston. 
and uh, just kind of kept growing. And uh, we came here to Alabama about about six or seven years ago. And uh, I've been at it. This is my third year. I'm, I'm actually from from Texas. Well, not originally from Texas. My wife is a Texan. And we were living in Houston for 20 years. And so that's how I got to know the Guadalupe Radio Network. I was on the radio a few times um, doing things in the, in my my past. My background is actually in Catholic secondary education. Well, that, that, let's talk. 25 let's, years. I want to um, talk about that. We, we got to take a break, though, Marty. But we'll, we'll, I don't, I don't want to just skip over it. I want to go deeper, deeper with you. Marty Matulia, he is the general manager for Guadalupe Radio Network in Alabama. Uh, EWTN affiliate, I guess, as you said, the largest affiliate that, that there is, and um, and a man of faith. I mean, if you're gonna, if, you know, the thing about EWTN is, is uh, your every step you take is like you're walking on water. It's just really, it's really beautiful the way Mother Angelica, her faith inspired our faith and all that the Lord has done. We'll be right back with the Bear Wozniak adventure. Schoolofmanliness.com is a place for men of grit and grace to join together, to inspire, to encourage, and to challenge each other, to grow in manly virtue. Members receive morning man meditations, a monthly curriculum that is rich with audio, video, and written content, and a trail guide to help you map out your new trajectory. Many of our members lead their sons through this same curriculum. Your membership gives you access to both the man cave which is our non-Facebook type community, and the School of Manliness at schoolofmanliness.com. Become a member at schoolofmanliness.com. Deep Adventure Ministries is grateful to Notre Dame Federal Credit Union for underwriting the Bear Wozniak Adventure on EWTN. Notre Dame Federal Credit Union provides car loans, mortgages, SBA loans, and depository accounts nationwide, as well as 24-hour support. Go to deepadventure.com to find their link or go to notredamefcu.com. Mahalo to Notre Dame Federal Credit Union for making the Bear Wozniak adventure possible. You can gain traction in the virtues in my book, Deep Adventure, The Way of Heroic Virtue, and you can be inspired by my personal testimony of heartache and triumph with my book, A Surfing Guide to the Soul, both newly published by Sophia and available at our web store, deepadventure.com and also on amazon.com. This is a warning. The Bear Wozniak Adventure is dangerous. The radical change Bear challenges you to is not for wimps. Change this station now to a soft rock station before it's too late. You've been warned. Now, here is Bear Wozniak. Aloha, welcome back to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. I want to invite everybody to go to our website, bearschoolofmanliness.com. And man, join our man cave in our, in our, in our uh, school of manliness. We're going to be having a man cave meetup, actually, um, as we're recording this, but it's going to be tonight, um, where all of us, all the men get together, and we, we go through a three-year curriculum together, the school of manliness. So this particular evening, we're going to be doing year two, month two. And so whenever you join, you just join up, join up with the pack, and you ride with us wherever we happen to be at that time. Um, and uh, but you uh, uh, might find it really cool to lead your sons through the school of manliness. The younger men cannot get a a access to the man cave, but they can get their own username and password so they can go into the school of manliness and actually monitor them as they watch uh, the audio, the video, and listen to the audio and read the read the content and do their self assessments and set their goals. And the idea is that you would do that with them. So go to bearschoolofmanliness.com. Join the man cave in the School of Manliness. Speaking of manliness, we have with us a Texan who's uh, who's in Alabama now. Actually, he's the general manager of Guadalupe Radio Network in Alabama. And um, we got to meet when we were at, speaking of another cowboy, Father Mitch Pacwa was with him on his uh, his, his evening show. And Marty and his, his uh, wife had come come to join us there. And uh, and Marty took gave us a ride back uh, to our hotel. And uh, so, Marty, uh, tell us now, so... You were you, 
tell us, uh, we don't want to just skip right ahead to you joining EWTM, but tell us about your, your life growing up and how you met your bride and your, your walk in faith. Okay, well, I was born in 1969 in Chardon, Ohio, uh, so where I, but I didn't stay there very long. My dad was in law enforcement, and uh, he took a job at the International Association of Chiefs of Police in Gaithersburg, Maryland, and uh, he was a consultant for police chiefs uh, around wow. the country. Wow. So we moved, we moved to Maryland. So I spent most of my early childhood and uh, middle school years and high school years in Maryland. And then I went to Radford University in Virginia. I uh, got my undergrad in political science, uh, but I really became interested in, in political philosophy, uh, mm. political theory. And um, I had a Catholic professor who was just a great mentor to, to me, introduced me to St. Augustine, St. Thomas Aquinas. And then I spent one year in formation with the Augustinians. I, I discerned um, the priesthood. And uh, it was a wonderful year. I, I realized very quickly into that year that that was not my calling. Um, but I, I spent the year in religious life and got to you know, do community prayer. And it was a wonderful experience. I had some, took some graduate theology courses. And then at actually the recommendation of this same professor the year prior, he said, you know, you might want to apply to some graduate schools just in case. <laughs> and so I did. And uh, I ended up at University of Dallas. So that was my first venture to Texas. And um, that's actually where I met my wife. She was not at the university. It was She was working in Dallas. It was a blind date. And, um, you know, it was just meant to be. I, I found my blonde haired blue eyed Texan girl and um, got my master's degree at the University of Dallas in um, what they call politics, but it was really political philosophy. I did my um, my master's thesis on St. Augustine, on the political thought of St. Augustine. Wow, that's that's like a, that's just a little slice, not, not too hard to cover. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> so the goal, yeah, the goal was to become a professor. Um, so I ended up, I, I got accepted to the Catholic University of America in Washington, D.C., so that was going to be kind of my excuse to get back to Maryland. Mm. And, and uh, at that time, my wife was already pregnant with our youngest. And I had some buddies say to me, you know, Marty, like it is tough sledding right now for, um, you know, to get a job, you know, especially for what you want to do. And very, <laughs> very yeah, my, I had a brother in law that did that. My dad said, well, this is going to be really good. Are you going to become a Roman uh, emperor? Or what's your plan here with the political policy? Right. So, you know, it's got a very, it narrows your path for sure, right? Yeah, yeah. absolutely. So I ended up <clears throat> at um, Catholic high schools. Uh, you know, I, I ended up teaching theology. Uh, so we went back to Maryland. Spent eight years there uh, at two different Catholic high schools. I was at St. Vincent Pilati in Laurel, Maryland for four years. And then I went to Mount St. Joseph High School for four years in Baltimore. All three of my sons were born in Maryland, much to their chagrin, because they, they all live in ta Texas now, so they, but they were actually uh, natives of, of Maryland. But uh, um, but my oldest son, you know, he's still an Orioles fan and Ravens fan, so he's a, he's a proud oh, Maryland. Oh, oh yeah, respect. for sure, yeah. <laughs> but I mean, he, are they like Mitch, Father Mitch? He said I was born. In, I think he said I think he, he was born in Illinois, but I, I got to Texas just as fast as, as I could. As quickly as I could. That's right. <laughs> yeah. And um, so we spent eight years there. But those those four years that I was at Mount St. Joe, began a journey, uh, at all boys Catholic high schools. And of course, I started coaching too. I was I, wow. I played college baseball. Uh, my brothers played college baseball, so you know, I started coaching my my sons in, in baseball and football and basketball. So my coaching career, you know, began in the, in the mid '90s or well, late '90s, I guess. So I was coaching high. I coached varsity baseball at St. Vincent Pilate, and then I coached um, freshman baseball at Mount St. Joe. So you were involved in forming young men. Not only your own sons, but other young men. I, you know, right, I, right from the get go. Exactly. I encourage, I encourage men, I encourage men to not just take your sons and drop them off. Go coach their teams. Uh, get involved. You know, not not like the crazy parents get involved, but go in yeah, there and absolutely. And, yeah. And oftentimes, I was coaching at the high school, but then I was also coaching my my boys. Um, you know, I would come home exhausted, but you know, then go to go to practice and uh, coach them. So I did that for many, many years. There's a lot of formation but, that takes place when you're on a team. I mean, individual yeah. sports do too, uh, but being on a team and knowing other people are relying on you is a huge, huge thing for a young man. Yeah, absolutely. And and I loved it. I mean, I really loved coaching. I loved forming those, those young men and, um, you know, boys. And, then, and that's really 
you know, became my my special interest gift, whatever you want to call it. Is I've always felt a calling to help boys to become, you know, young men and, and honorable, you know, respectful um, Christian gentlemen. Mm. And so those four years at Mount now, Saint Joe. Can, can, can I interrupt of, you? Can I interrupt you for a second? Sure. You just said that you help those young boys become men to become uh, uh, gentlemen. And uh, there's a John Wayne quote in my book where he says, "You're you're." Uh, so, someone referred to someone as a gentleman. It's not. It's John Wayne quoting Louis L'Amour, and he's saying, uh, "To be a gentleman, you first have to be a man." That's right. So then, men men need to be formed by other men. That's right. Absolutely. And um, so, from Mount Saint Joe, my my Texan bride, she wanted to go home, and uh, she she grew up uh, just outside of Houston. And uh, at this point, my parents had already retired, and they moved to, to Florida to be at warmer weather. And, it, and my, I already had a brother and a sister down there. So my mom was trying to reel us, you know, down to Florida. I said, Mom, there's only one Catholic high school in Orlando, and there's about eight in Houston. So I like my chances better in Houston. Mm. And uh, so we ended up moving to Houston. And I got a job at St. Thomas High School, which was also an all-boys Catholic high school, very prestigious yeah, Catholic High School in Houston has been there since 1900, and uh, it was a great experience. So for 16 years, I was the director of campus ministry. I was a theology teacher and a wow. coach. You know, drove the bus, uh, whatever it took. Take, went on mission trips. You know, did service projects, and it just was a, a wonderful, wonderful 16 years. I, I have no regrets. It was it was fun, you know, and got to, you know, spend a lot of time with, with boys and their fathers. Um, right. One of the things that we did was we started a father-son retreat uh, about, you know, probably like four years into my experience at St. Thomas. We ended up doing that for 12 consecutive years. And we had a father-son retreat. We did mission trips. We, we had a... a we started off as a dad's club, but it morphed into something even more special. We called it the Men of St. Thomas. And, you know, so that's when I yeah, started really think more and more about, you know, there's something to this. There's something about dads and other men helping to form boys into mm -hmm. Christian gentlemen. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it's, it's uh, in Hawaii we have the tradition of uncle. If, if you were walk, to walk down the beach here with me, with my wife, Cindy, uh, we can't get, it's almost like running a gauntlet because all the younger men are saying, hey, Uncle Bear, hey, Uncle Bear, hey, Uncle Bear. So here we call the, we call anyone 20 years older than us uncle or auntie, but they take it seriously. There's a lot of respect there and there's a lot of coming up and asking for advice there. You know, a lot of young men don't have a father in their lives. And so that uncle role is very important. Uh, we're talking with Marty Matulia. He's the general manager of Guadalupe Radio Network in, in Alabama. And so, and also you said at one point you were involved in prison ministry, I think. Did you say that? Um, no, I was involved with a, an organization called Magnificat Houses, uh, mm. which is um, works with um, the homeless, um, formerly incarcerated, mm. and uh, the mentally uh, ill, you know, mm. people coming off the streets in Houston. I used to take my sophomores, 12 at a time, down to Magnificat Houses, and they also have a soup kitchen downtown, right, right around the corner from Minute Maid Park, where the Astros play. And uh, it's kind of a pretty, very well-known entity. It was, a, you know, it has a Catholic foundation. And so I would take my students down there, 12 at a time, for their sophomore retreat, and I became very involved with Magnificat. And, um, you know, I was on their board, yeah, and uh, that you know that too was just a tremendous. It, it, allow, it allows the young the young men to see uh, the advantage that they have, and you know, the reason why I brought that up is because so many of those men that are incarcerated, I think well over half, maybe in a larger percentage, are, are men who didn't have a father when they were growing up. And so we're going to talk about that when we come back with Marty Matulia. He's the general manager of Guadalupe Radio Network in Alabama. It's the largest EWTN affiliate. And we're going to talk about uh, my book, 12 Rules for Manliness, Where Have All the Cowboys Gone, and the, and the applications that he has, sees in it for young men and for fathers working with their sons. We'll be right back with more of the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Announcing Spirit Adventure TV with Bear and Cindy. So many people, especially you mama bears, tell us we want more of Bear and Cindy together. 
Well, we're happy to announce our website, spiritofadventuretv.com, as well as our YouTube channel, Bear Wozniak Spirit of Adventure, where you can watch Spirit of Adventure TV with Bear and Cindy. Join us where we live in the Hawaiian Islands or where we sail our boat, the Spirit of Adventure, in the Caribbean. Experience both adventure and serenity with us as we share our life together, as well as the joy and the wisdom of our faith. Go to spiritofadventuretv.com to find out more and subscribe on YouTube to Bear Wozniak Spirit of Adventure. And join us, Spirit of Adventure, with Bear and Cindy. Here is a YouTube video short, which is based on an excerpt from my newest book, 12 Rules for Manliness, Where Have All the Cowboys Gone? Riding for the brand means respecting authority. It is there where the spiritual battle line, in fact, is drawn, and how the fight against the powers of darkness is won. It is Satan who led the failed rebellion in heaven. The devil hates and fears God's authority. A man must demonstrate to his wife and his family that he is under God's authority, and then God will affirm this for them to see. They need to see that the father is riding for the brand. Then, and really only then, will a child truly respect and honor their father's servant leadership. Buy 12 Rules for Manliness, Where Have All the Cowboys Gone? at schoolofmanliness.com or wherever books are sold. Mama Bears, get these books into the hands of your men. Go to schoolofmanliness.com and subscribe to our weekly email to receive video YouTube links of the Bear Wozniak radio show, as well as the Spirit of Adventure with Bear and Cindy TV show, which, by the way, is filmed in the tropics, as well as our manly evangelistic YouTube shorts. Go to schoolofmanliness.com. Be the kind of man that when he gets out of bed in the morning, the devil says, oh no, he's up. Go to deepadventure.com and invite Bear to speak. Aloha, welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. I'm your adventure guide, Bear Wozniak. We want to let you guys know that our TV show, Long Ride Home with Bear Wozniak, is airing on EW10 on Friday nights. It's also on the Amazon Prime uh, Network. I, if you feel like you want to power watch it, you can go there and watch it. Uh, it's a great way to, to put that. So many men have come to the Lord and to the Catholic Church because someone was watching a motorcycle TV show and they got sucked into watching a motorcycle show and then they found out it was about the Lord. So it's a great thing to have on when you have your brother-in-law over or, or, or your son's friends over. And um, so you can watch it on Prime Video or you can go to bearschoolofmanliness.com. If you become a member, you get we, we send you access to the YouTube of all 33 episodes. And the last season, the most recent season, was all filmed here in Hawaii, 11 episodes shot here in Hawaii. So it's cinematic. And it's, it's actually tally award winning. It's a good show. It's a well done show. Did it uh, with my sons, uh, uh, Shane and Josh. So uh, uh, something for we, our family to yours. Speaking of families, I have with us Marty Matulia. He's part of the EWTN family, general manager at Guadalupe Radio Network in Alabama. And Marty, you raised uh, three sons. Did you say? Did you have a? Do you have any other children and a daughter or? No, just three sons. Um, my three sons. I love it. Uh, Haas, little Joe, and uh, what were the three? And Adam. Those were the three. The big uh, bonanza. Tell us then. You you said you've taken some time. You've read through this book, Twelve Rules for Manliness, my my newest book. Where have all the cowboys gone? And you see real application uh, for young men. Can you just? Dive into that. Tell us what you tell us what you what your Absolutely. thoughts are. Absolutely, you know, especially the very last chapter. Uh, mm. There were so many lessons, not only for young men but for the dads, and and how important it is, uh, you know, to have these informal rites of passage. Um, you know, when when boys are little, they hang out with their mom, but there comes a time when the father must launch them into manhood. You know, Barrett, when when I was at St. Thomas High School, I love to tell this story. Um, you know, first week of school, we had a chapel right next to my office and we had daily mass. We were very fortunate. First week of school, a lot of moms and dads would would bring their freshman sons to the chapel to mass, you know, to kind of show them the way. 
and inevitably i would i would kind of scan the the you know the chapel and i'd see moms with their sons i'd see some dads with their sons sometimes it was both parents but inevitably the boys that were with their moms once that kind of that week went by mom stopped coming i would very rarely ever see that boy again at daily mass in the mm. chapel but the boys that came with their dads I would often see them, maybe not all the time, but like I definitely knew who they were. And then sometimes their dad would come and the boy would come, you know, with his dad to mass. And so that really got me thinking as well about the spiritual role that a father has in the household and why we're in such dire straits as a society, you know, with with these fatherless homes, with dads who have not stepped up to to their God-given duty to be the spiritual leaders of their homes. And you you really get into that throughout your book. But, uh, you know, in particular, that last chapter really hit home on me. But there are, there are a couple other chapters. I mean, all of the book is wonderful. But like your chapter, uh, you know, the sixth rule of manliness, uh, you know, the, uh, I guess it's, I don't know if it's chapter six, but, um, you know, I'm, I've got on my notes here, you know, not, rule number five, bridle your passion. Rule number six: Don't be a drifter. Seek God's purpose for you. Um, that was that was a wonderful chapter. I took a lot of notes on that one. Rule number seven: Pursue, pursue your course of action. Uh, a lot of just great nuggets in there. And uh, rule number eight: Get the job done. I mean, it just goes on and on. But that that last chapter, number ten: Build brotherhood. Um, and, and I, well, I'm sorry, it's not the last chapter, but, you know, rule 10, 11, 12, you had build brotherhood, how you treat a woman in, in rule 11, or how a man treats a woman defines them. And then finally, fill your quiver, the adventure of fatherhood. And I mean, that just hit home. And I, I do want to add, Bear, when I when I bought your book, I mean, I just started reading it like crazy. And I told my wife, so I went right back to the EWN 10 catalog shop and I bought three for all, all three right. of my sons. Oh, and cool. I gave it to them for Christmas. Mm. Well, you know, it, it is, I, you know, the adventure of fatherhood, I said that for a reason because, you know, the word adventure implies in it, um, it's not an adventure unless everything goes wrong. <laughs> You know, so part of being a dad, you know, you're a, I was 24, I think, when my first child was born. I'm trying to figure out, I, you know, I'm trying to figure things out and, and, and failing in so many ways, but heart and soul into being a father. And I think that's one thing that kids know that that you're in it all the way with them. And uh, when you do that, at, um, you, you know, fill, fill your quiver, fill your quiver. Um, uh, and and launch those children uh, in a, in the trajectory that they're intended to go. I know each one of my children, my three, my daughter and my three sons, so unique. Each one of them have their limitations, which are God given. You know, certain things we can do, certain things we can't do. I'll never be a an NBA player. I have limitations. Those limitations tend to keep us within God's navigational beacons. You know. Um, and dealing with those limitations help us grow in virtue so that when we do work, when we do go towards God's purpose, and, we, and that's defined kind of by the strengths he gives us and the desires he gives us, um, we have the virtue to do, do it properly, you know. But, yeah, so that to, to identify, there's a scripture verse that says, while you're on the way with your sons, teach them the way that they should go. And when they're older, they will not depart from it. Well, each child has a unique way that they should go. And it's not my job to show them this is the way you're supposed to go, but it's to identify what is it I see in their heart. What are the gifts God's giving them? Like for one of my sons who, who is the director and the videographer for our TV show, he was the most destructive kid, Marty, uh, not meaning to be. Not meaning to be, but I would say there was a while there when he was, before he was five years old, he cost me probably $100 a week in repairs, you know. <laughs> he just, he was just a beast, and he was just, he did, we would move first and think second, you know. I mean, hanging from the, hanging from the curtains and things like that, you know. Uh, but, um, you know, and so he was destructive. So one of my sons had borrowed, when we had those video cams, had, my oldest son had borrowed it to make skating videos, and by the time he was done, there was no more camera, right? And this was the son that was careful with things. And so then when my son Shane said, hey, Dad, can I borrow your brand new video camera that you just bought? I said no. And it was as if the Lord grabbed me by the shoulder and just spun me around and said, don't loan it to him. Give it to him. 
And I gave him that camera because I saw in him these gifts as well as these limitations. And those limitations forced him towards his genius. And he's the, he's the great director and videographer and uh, you know, editor for A Long Ride Home. And, you know, so to identify these gifts in each of your sons and the way that they should go, not the way you want them to go, but the way that God has designed them to go, is a real big part of being a dad. Yeah, and, you know, all three of my sons are, you know, they're all unique. My oldest is 29. Uh, he just got engaged. Um, that's the one that you met when mm -hmm. he was, was 20 and, and really struggling at that mm -hmm. time. And fortunately, he met his now, you know, soon-to-be wife around around the same time, maybe mm. a little bit a year later, and that really started to make a difference in his life. And you mentioned that, too, about how important, you know, to have a woman to, you know, to, to become a more responsible man. And it certainly has been the case in his life. And then my middle son is soon to be 27. Uh, he has a birthday next week. And then my youngest is uh, 24, and he's engaged as well. He's actually going to get married this September. Wow, that's awesome. Uh, that's so awesome. He was always awesome. kind of the, the more mature one, um, you know, and, and he, even his brothers would admit that. But, well, he, he got uh, to learn from their mistakes. He watched yeah, them. Right. He watched and them. I'm the youngest, too. I have two older brothers and older sisters. So, you know, I think and he spent four years with me um, traveling back and forth to St. Thomas High School in the HOV lane. Mm. So I got to spend a lot of time. That's the only reason him. you signed him up for that school, so you could get the, take the fast lane. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> exactly. The brutal, brutal Houston traffic. But, um, yeah, and, you know, it's so interesting. You know, Bear, probably one of the greatest lessons I had to learn as a father was uh, with, you know, Mitchell, my oldest son. You know, he, I don't want to get into all the details, but he, he was really, uh, had a bad patch there. And, you know, I guess it was when he was 20 years old and um, kind, of, kind of had to um, not drop out of school, but he decided to take a semester off. And um, I had to be the forgiving father in this the story of the prodigal son and that rembrandt painting of the return of the prodigal son that had such an impact in my life at that time you know prior to this my boys really were good good kids i mean they didn't really get in a lot of trouble as as young kids but, but boy during those late teenage years they started to give me a run for my money <laughs> and um you know between 17 and 21 um mm. not so much the youngest per se but the older two and um you know thank thanks be to god you know we all got through that together it's, it, it's like marty we got to take a break but it's kind of like uh someone told me once when i was going through that season with my children that it's like you're you're going down a nice stream beautiful flowing stream in a raft and then you get get some rapids and then you get really class five rapids and you just hope there isn't a waterfall at the end you know uh, we're talking with marty hang Mat on <laughs> yeah hang on just hang on absolutely marty matulia the general manager for Guadalupe Radio Network, the largest EWTN affiliate uh, in the Alabama area. We'll be right back with more of the Bear Wozniak adventure. People love our EWTN TV show, Long Ride Home with Bear Wozniak. Thanks to you, the show has won four different tally awards. And now, instead of waiting each week for the next episode to air, you can actually binge watch our show and even share it with your friends when you go to deepadventure.com and join the Mama Bears or the Man Cave. Along with all the other benefits, you get total access to all the seasons of our aired episodes, plus instant access to episodes that won't even air for several months. Long Ride Home with Bear Wastick, a great way to communicate the gospel in a gritty enough way that even tough men will stop and watch at deepadventure.com. Deep Adventure Ministries is grateful to Notre Dame Federal Credit Union for underwriting the Bear Wozniak Adventure on EWTN. Notre Dame Federal Credit Union provides car loans, mortgages, SBA loans, and depository accounts nationwide, as well as 24-hour support. Go to deepadventure.com to find their link or go to notredamefcu.com. Mahalo to Notre Dame Federal Credit Union for making the Bear Wozniak adventure possible. My newest book, 12 Rules for Manliness, Where Have All the Cowboys Gone, has hit the top five in Christian books for a good reason. It's because men are searching for traction and a trail guide to live out the unique calling and the gifts 
that they were born with, that each man individually is factory loaded with by God. Paul said, be watchful, stand firm in the faith, act like men, do all things in love. Finally, here is a book that talks with men the way men talk with each other. Just plain old straight shoot. By the way, Mama Bears, this is your chance to get this message to your men. Go to schoolofmanliness.com or anywhere books are sold. 12 Rules for Manliness. Where have all the cowboys gone? Are you still listening? I thought we warned you to change to an easy listening station. Well, you asked for it. Here is more of the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Aloha, welcome back to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. I'm your adventure guide, Bear Wozniak. Our guest is Marty Matulia. He's the general manager for Guadalupe Radio Network in the Alabama area. I want to invite you to go to our website, bearschoolofmanliness.com, and sign up for our weekly newsletter. You get the video version of that week's uh, radio show. Uh, you get the 60-second uh, clips that you can youtube clips that you can sh use to evangelize or evangelize and uh and always great stuff in our newsletter so uh, go to uh, bearschoolofmanlies.com and sign up for the sign up for the newsletter check out our store too we all have all kinds of catholic gear and t-shirts and and books so uh go to bear school of manliness and just check us out our guest today is marty matulia marty you know um this book is 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 meant it's a kind of it's not your normal book, right? I mean, it's really like the way a man would talk to another man. I and mean, we talk about stuff that maybe you wouldn't be talking about in normal circles. You know, in, 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 it's like an uncle talking to a, a, a nephew or a father to a son or man to man. It's the kind of thing that you just really got to get down to and talk to with your sons. What are, the, what are some of the specific things you, you would say to men if they, go, if they get this book, 12 Rules for Manliness, Where Have All the Cowboys Gone? How can they ha use that as a way to com have a deeper, get traction with their sons and really go into deeper subjects? Yeah, and it, you know, one of the things that's jumping out at me is, again, that last rule. Um, you know, the importance of other men, you know, oftentimes as a dad, and I, I mentioned that experience I had with my oldest son, you know, I needed the help of other men at that time. I had a spiritual director, a wonderful priest. I had other dads that I leaned on. There was a gentleman, he's unfortunately he's deceased now. His name was Bill Schofield. And he was such a model to me of what a true man is. And uh, just, you know, generous, a servant servant leader he was the grand mm. knight of, of the knights columbus and just just a wonderful sense of humor and just you know he really taught me and then of course i had my own father you know, my father mm -hmm. i didn't always like him growing up but i always respected him and he was my my best man mm. in, in my wedding and um you know there was two two things i remember about him there and you you bring this up in your book i when we would come back from receiving the eucharist my dad would always be in deep prayer. He would have his eyes closed and his you know, hand on, to, on his forehead. And that made such an impression on me mm. as, a, as a young boy. And the second thing he did was about, you know, maybe once every couple of months or so, we'd all load into the station wagon. It was on a Saturday afternoon. We knew where we were going. We weren't going to the ballpark. We were going, we were going to church and we were all gonna go to confession. You know, we went together as a family. Mm. And uh, that made such an impression on me uh, as, a, as a boy. And my father, who wasn't, you know, overly religious, he wasn't one of these guys that read his Bible. And, you know, I didn't really see him praying a lot outside of, of Mass. But, boy, that made such an impression on me as, as a boy and then, of course, as a, as a father that I wanted to make sure that, that I instilled that in my own sons. So you know, it's that's that's leadership as opposed to telling your sons what to do. You're you're leading by example. You know, and I think I think this. Um, what what do you think about the area of the book? Um, there's one area there that young men especially need to hear these days, and that's where where we talk about bridle your passion, so that good things can run wild. It's it's alarming to me the full on attack uh, these days on all men and women especially younger men in this area of uh, of sexual passion you know there's a, there's a difference between the word passion which I believe 
the root word is to suffer when you the, the word passion versus desire which is the word that means to look up at the stars so God said I will take away the heart of stone from your body and give you a heart of flesh he says I'll give you new and right desires and he says another place and your land will be called the your land will be called the married land and you shall be called my delight so we want to take these passions and suffer them to say no not here not yet not with this person not this way not by um, looking at pornography but by waiting and uh, and uh, and at the right time uh, in the in nuptial union to fully embrace and experience what what that nuptial union is and what, what how and the fulfillment of that desire that God intends but I see so young men, so many young men that are fractured in their souls. You can almost read it on their, you can almost read it on them, that 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 guy is struggling with with uh, with pornography. And guess what? Every man needs to struggle. We need to fight the good fight. We need to win that fight because Satan is on the attack. He's he's demeaning women. And uh, as John Paul II said, the problem with pornography isn't that it shows too much of a woman. It's that it shows too little. It doesn't show her heart. It doesn't show her soul. It makes her the object of lust instead of the, instead of the subject of love. So um, what, are your thought, what are your thoughts about that in regards to younger yeah, men? Yeah, you have men, a quote on page men. 78. It said, men, you are on full-on attack by the demon pornography. You must have a strategy to defeat that enemy. And, you know, one of the things I noticed in my career, Bear, is you know, for the first, I don't know, like maybe 15 years or so, smartphones weren't weren't a big thing until, you know, probably around 2010, 2011, somewhere in there. And I, I remember doing retreats. I always had junior retreats where, you know, I did at least four of them a year. Sometimes it was more than that. And we'd have small groups. And I can distinctly remember when when smartphones came on the on the scene the small group dynamic suddenly shifted it changed and what you were talking about that that look in their eye that that shame like you knew that these boys were struggling and you know not you know with all sorts of things but especially that issue and you know then parent, moms would come to me and, and dads too and just say you know i'm not sure how to deal with this situation and um, you know, it just became such a, a impactful thing, and of course, it, it still is. And um, and it's something that you know not just boys struggle with, but but men as well. You know, the, the fathers themselves. And and what happens is when you know a father's struggling with it, he you know he's feeling shame, and then he doesn't always know how to help the son because he's feeling so much he's got to win he's got to win it he's got to win it it's and you know you're like a protective umbrella for your family and when you're not under god's authority it's like you're a leaky umbrella and if you're struggling with that believe me your sons are going to be too because it's like the rain is the, the demonic rain is going right through that protective umbrella and affecting your affecting the children too and you know there's a there's a there was a a research study done where they asked um pastors <clears throat> How, what percentage of the men in your congregation struggle with this, with pornography? And Protestant pastors were like 15 to 20 percent. And Catholic priests were like most of them, you know, 70 percent. Because guess what? Catholic men go to confession, <laughs> so the priests really knew. And so, but the fact that the, the pastors thought 10 to 20 percent lets you know what a shameful thing it is and that the men really hide from that. But the beauty of being involved with other brothers is I just tell the men, you know, we're all knuckle draggers, we're all bozos on the same bus, we're all dealing with the same stuff. So instead of hiding out, get with the That Man Is You program or an Exodus 90 program or Bear School of Manliness. There's so many great uh, programs like that. And get involved with a small group of men where you can challenge each other and encourage each other. You know, and, and, and this is a one area where you can, men will just open up and say, you know, we gotta, we got to fight and we got to win, win this. Yeah, Don, Father Don Calloway. Oh, that about that this. rookie. Father yeah, Don. I've been reading. One, <laughs> I've been reading one of his books. Wait, wait a minute! I got to ask you: Is is it before he became his easy top priest? You know, uh, when he he was a surfer guy, then he became the early church Greek father, church no, father, sorry. long beard. <laughs> now he's back to. Be, I love that guy. We were with him in Israel, by the way. We got to go. Yeah, on. He's, he's so awesome. What, what he's is, actually going to be our our speaker for our Fishers and Men dinner in August here. That's in so cool. I want to I want to I want to come and be your speaker sometime. But that is he is awesome. he talking about in his book Saint Joseph Terror of Demons? Well, no. That this one I'm reading right now. I've read that one, but or the Consecration of Saint Joseph. But this one's called Under the Mantle, 
Mm. And uh, he had a few chapters in there about manliness. And he, he mentioned, he talked about exactly what you talked about, is that, you know, he hears lots of confessions. And so he knows, you know, what, what's on these men's hearts and what, what's, what they're struggling with. And uh, so I just wanted to comment on that. You know, Bear, it's interesting. I have an article here that I found when I started pulling off all my books. We, we got it. We got a minute and a half for you. Books. We got two minutes for you to wrap this up. Go for okay. it. But in May of 2000, there was an article in the Atlantic Monthly, and it that was titled "Girls Rule: Myth Makers to the Contrary." It's boys who are in deep trouble, and a lady by the name of Christina Hoff Summers wrote this article, and this is 24 years ago. Of course, the problem even goes beyond that. So pretty much the span of my whole career. I've been dealing with this issue of boys really struggling. And, you know, so that's that's why I, you know, I think we need to apply these lessons that you talk about in your book, you know, the 12 lessons of, of, of manliness, 12 rules of manliness, and apply them to, you know, especially to teenage boys. Yeah, and they and they they'll win that they'll win that victory. But and we need it. We, we need to be in a company of men. Uh, we're talking with Marty Matulia. He's the general manager of Guadalupe Radio Network in Alabama. I'm so proud to have you on on the show. It's really great to meet someone who's right out there in the fight, right on the right at you know boots on the ground fighting the good fight uh, and uh, for EWTN and for all of us, so we can we can hear the hear the great message. Um, you know, when God uh, breathed uh, his his spirit into Adam. Um, he, you know, he breathed his spirit in Adam, and Adam became a living soul. He be- became a magio dei, made in the image of God, able to commune with God. Uh, in Hawaii, the word ha means breath. And so when we say aloha, it means to give breath. That's what God did when he breathed into Adam, and when Jesus said, my peace I give you, my peace I leave with you. And so we always end our show by just saying, may the breath of the Holy Spirit aloha you. Aloha. Aloha. <laughs> Thanks for listening to the Bear Wilding Adventure. Find more manly conversation at the Bear Wilding Deep Adventure YouTube channel. Subscribe and ring the bell.